What's up gamers? My name is See Through. Today I'm going to be giving you 10 small land tips that are going to help you out if you decide to play small land. If you enjoy this video or any of these tips helped you out, please do me a huge favor. Hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe for more small lands or survival game content. Let's get into it. All right. So tip number one um, is going to be called the NVIDIA Gamma Adjustment. So this game has absolutely no contrast, brightness, gamma adjustment settings. So if you have a NVIDIA graphics card and you have the GeForce experience, if you press Alt Z, you will see this screen pop up here and just go to game filters, uh, go to your number one slot and you can add a brightness and contrast filter. And once you get that brightness and contrast filter, you can either copy my adjustments here or uh, make your own adjustments. And I also have in here a hotkey uh, where are the hotkeys at here under settings and hotkeys? Where are they at? Here we are. Keyboard shortcuts. Uh, so activate filter here. Toggle filters on and off is on my numpad minus. Uh, so if I close out of this, I can just at the press of a button. Uh, if it gets too dark or stormy or anything like that and you can't see, uh, I could just flip that on and you guys can tell the noticeable difference, especially if you're recording content for this game you definitely wanna have something like that on. All right, tip number two is going to be how to get the most wood and fiber. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to find these trees that are called saplings. Once you get a flint ax, you can chop these trees down. And uh, these are going to absolutely give you the most yield. Uh, and I will show you guys the place that I like to farm them. I just found it earlier today. Uh, there's a bunch of them right here. And I am in like the little black hornet's den in the far north part of the map up here in this top north corner northwest corner uh you can kind of see where caleb is here lissandra's over here uh right along this fence line right here that's where i'm at more or less right where on the other side of this tree the big black hornet spawns there so this is the greatest and fastest way to obtain as much we got five five fiber four wood and two resin right there and let's see how much we get from here. Five wood, three resin, five fiber. So, yeah, this is definitely how you get the most bang for your buck uh, when farming for wood and plant fibers. Let's go. Another real quick tip here coming into tip number three is always bring a build hammer with you uh, because you can drop down a workbench real fast. And as long as you have not damaged your, your tool too much here, uh, you can come in and repair it for free. Uh, you'll be able to see here that I have waited too long to repair this uh, and it cost resin, flint, and refined wood. But this right here says item slightly damaged, only basic maintenance uh, required, resource at no cost. So I can repair that piece of armor, this piece of armor, this hammer, this pickaxe, everything in here for absolutely free. So definitely make sure you bring the material with you. Uh, for a workbench on the go and don't forget to uh, yeah, you get one for one material back when you destroy things so uh, Drop it build it drop it build it drop it build it easy peasy tip number four Once you climb your first tree and claim your first tree to live in you can there are probably 20 or 30 trees across the entire uh, Area here that you can go and move your base to any one of those locations so, you know, we have a tree here as well. My, my base is actually currently in this tree. Uh, we have another one over here and we have one here as well. You just talk to the gnome real fast and you say, I want to claim this tree and move my encampment here. And then now we can just call down the, uh, call down the hot air lift and we can go up there and our base inventory building and everything uh, will have transferred to this tree. All right, tip number five is gonna be, where do I find Flint? So we are down here on the South Beach, right here where it says go here, uh, right in, pretty much in the bottom south of the map. Um, anywhere and everywhere, you're gonna have to watch out for geckos because geckos are gonna be down here. Uh, and you're also going to need a pickaxe. And once you craft your pickaxe, you come down here and there's all the Flint you could possibly ever want. Uh, make sure that you use my workbench um, idea and mine about 10, 10 of these or so, and you'll watch, just keep an eye on the dur durability down here. Uh, more or less, once the durability passes, the actual number that's on your bar is about when you can repair your item uh, kind of on the go here. So we can see it's already taken some damage. We'll go ahead and pull out a quick workbench, pull it up here and repair our pickaxe for free. Just like that. 
tip number six, another item you're going to need a lot of in the early game is chitin or chitin. If you're weird, but it's definitely pronounced chitin, fight me in the comments about it. But uh, any sort of beetle. So there's these beetles here, the green beetles, and there's also the red ones that are a lot easier to kill in the upper yard. But if you happen to be in the upper yard, good lord. Um, if you happen to be down here, uh, these guys will drop chitin as well as uh, pretty much any beetle in the yard. So... We just come up and we smack them with a blunt object. Uh, each different bug has a um, a weakness. So if you walk up to them and use your ant view or whatever the heck it's called, it'll tell you that green beetles right in front of me is uh, weak to blunt damage. So that's why we can literally give this guy the smack down with this big hammer. And uh, yeah, he won't really do much to us. And we get chitin and animal fat from those guys. So yeah, hopefully that helps. Also, another real quick bonus tip to add on to that one is uh, bark here. As long as you have a flint pickaxe, uh, bark is also all over this beach in the same area. Uh, just hop, skipped, and jumped the water over to here um, because I'm going to show you guys my next tip, which is the silent crit, I'm going to call it. Uh, more or less, if you have a bow with you, that's always the best way to initiate a fight. So here we have a dragonfly. Uh, you're going to see the red number pop up on the screen. That's going to show us that we crit him uh, without him pretty much knowing. Uh, we did 70 there and then a 36 after that. Um, and this works for just about any mob, right? So we got another green beetle over here somewhere. Where did he go? Uh, the first initial hit, as long as he do, he's not aggro to us, he doesn't know that we're here, uh, it's going to be a crit right there with 50 damage. And then, uh, you know, we can keep shooting him with the bow. You'll see it'll do reduced damage at this point because he does now know that we're here. But that, that'll that give us a head start so we take less damage when we get into the fight. And we just wax him with our blunt weapon. And look at all this spark. Holy. All right, tip number eight is going to be for heavy chitin. Eventually, you're going to need to find heavy chitin. You're probably curious, where the heck do I get that from? Uh, we are in the very bottom right of the map. This whole entire island here, right here is crawling with... Uh, the big orange hornets and stag beetles right down there. Uh, they're kind of a pain in the butt to kill, but they are killable, absolutely. I just smack them with my blunt weapon. Uh, also up here in the northwestern part of the yard, you're also going to find the orange hornets and roaches also drop heavy chitin. So that's the three mobs uh, that drop it as far as I know. And we'll drop down here real quick and take out the stag beetle so I can show you that uh, they do drop heavy chitin. And he is kind of a pain in the butt. We're just going to right click with the heavy crit here. We're going to take him out right here. And he's going to drop some heavy chitin for us uh, deep in the ground right here. There we go. Heavy chitin. If we can pick it up. If we can pick it up. All right. Cool. There we go. Hold down E to pick up all of it. Uh, all right. So that's heavy chitin for you right there. Easy peasy. All right. The second to last tip here. Tip number nine. I don't know if this is an intended game mechanic here. But say you're about to die, maybe you're like a real thick in, uh, you don't have any heals, you're running out of options, or you're really far from base. Uh, if you want to get back to your tree, all you have to do is quit the game. It will keep all of your inventory saves as you quit, and you rejoin, and it will put you in the last location where you slept at, where you saved your spawn in your bed. And this is actually huge for going out farming resources. That way you don't have to find your way back to your tree. It puts you right back inside of your house again, up in your treetop, nestled safely right there, just like that. Yep, yep, yep. All right, the very last tip I have for you guys is be prepared for winter. And what I mean by that is about 10 hours into the game, the season is going to change to winter. I don't know exactly what the time frame is, but what you are going to want to do, probably in the very early, early parts of this is Hearn has a cold protection outfit here uh, the padded chest legs and bracers that are going to give you a total of 21 uh, cold protection which if you look at my current armor I have on right now uh, that is 3, 6, 9, 12 cold protection between this uh, the regal uh, flying armor the B armor so make sure, because you will freeze to death, that you get some cold protection gear. Ultimately, you're going to want to work up to the uh, to the other armor here that Scotty sells. This is really good cold protection. We've got nine cold protection on each one. This is going to be your winter, ultimate winter outfit. 
uh, to prevent you from freezing to death. It's got a total of 36 cold protection. It's going to keep you alive during the winter. And when the season changes, it's going to blow your mind. If you haven't seen it change yet, it's really, really cool. The whole, the whole entire world changes. But either way, guys, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully these tips help you out. Please make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, comment down below if you've got any more tips you want to add to my next Small Lands Tip video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you on the next one. Peace.